In today's tutorial, we'll show you how to create this simple but effective interaction using HANA, something you can easily integrate into your website, app, or project without writing any code. We'll use a basic ellipse shape and learn how to apply the follow event, along with adjusting the damping to create this smooth chained follow effect. Let's get started. Let's get started by creating a new frame. You can do this by clicking the frame icon or simply pressing the F key, then dragging with your cursor to define the size. In this case, we'll set it to 960 by 540 pixels, but you can choose any size that fits your project. Once the frame is created, let's change the background color to black. Now we'll create an ellipse. You can do that by selecting the ellipse tool or pressing the O key. Hold shift while you drag to make sure it stays proportional. Next, we'll style the ellipse. Now let's add a white stroke by clicking here. You can adjust the stroke's thickness and color, but we'll keep the default. To blend it with the background, set the fill color to black. Now let's adjust the opacity. We'll reduce it to 60%. You can try duplicating the shape by pressing Ctrl or Command plus D, and you'll notice it creates a subtle transparency effect, which adds a nice touch to the interaction. Now let's move this ellipse slightly and create a duplicate. We duplicate it with Command plus D or Ctrl plus D, then move it to the side. And now let's make this second ellipse a bit smaller. Let's start by testing the follow event on just this ellipse. Select it and in the right hand panel, click here to create a new event. Then click here and choose follow from the list. When you choose the follow event, it lets you create interactions where an element follows either the cursor or another object in your design. You can adjust these settings to customize your interaction. You can set the target to define what the shape should follow, either the cursor or another element. You can also tweak other options like damping, offset, translation, and more. For now, let's leave the default settings and click here to preview. In play mode, we can see that the ellipse already follows my cursor. It reacts instantly because the damping is set to one. But how do we make the second ellipse follow the first one? Let's go back and select the second ellipse. Apply the same follow event. But this time set the target to the first ellipse. Let's see what happens if we go to play mode now. Since we didn't adjust the damping in the second ellipse, both ellipses are snapping instantly to their targets. Let's fix that by increasing the damping value in the second ellipse. This will slow down its movement, making it feel smoother and more natural. In the settings for the second ellipse, let's set the damping value to something like 30. Now when we preview it again, the second ellipse lags behind slightly, creating a smooth trailing motion. Now we can simply adjust the scale and duplicate to create more ellipses. We'll start by scaling down the second ellipse a bit and moving it slightly in the frame. Then let's duplicate it to make a third ellipse and scale that one down even more. One more time, duplicate again to create a fourth ellipse even smaller than the last. And just like that, we've got four ellipses, each one smaller than the one before. Since we duplicated them, they already have the follow event applied. All we need to do now is tweak a few settings to get that nice chain following effect. Let's click on the second ellipse first. We'll keep the target as the first ellipse and set the damping to 10. Next, select the third ellipse. Click here, then go to the target setting to select the second ellipse so it follows this one. Then adjust the damping a bit. Let's set it to 20. And finally, click on the fourth ellipse. We'll make it follow the third one. You could adjust the damping here as well, but let's keep it at 30. Let's quickly go over what we did. The second ellipse follows the first, the third follows the second, and the fourth follows the third. 
and gradually increasing the damping value to create a nice flowing chain reaction so each ellipse smoothly catches up to the one before it. If we preview now, we'll see that each shape follows the one ahead of it, generating a subtle motion trail. You can always go back and make changes to your design. We can adjust the size a bit, for example, and make the ellipses slightly smaller. We can click this lock icon here to keep the aspect ratio while adjusting the width or height of our ellipses. Adjusting the size of the shape this way gives you better control and lets you use more precise, accurate values. Just apply the changes however you like. And you can also fine tune the position of the ellipses within the frame. You can select the ellipses and keep them centered this way. And to preview the interaction, we can also click the play icon right here on the frame. And as you can see with just a simple shape and the follow event, you can create this smooth movement. Simple, but really effective. It's a great to add a subtle dynamic touch to your design. Now to export your design, select the frame and click on the three dot icon here, then choose export. In this menu, you can customize the export settings like turning off the HANA logo, disabling scroll, or hiding the background color. You can also choose from different frame sizes. For example, you can leave it set to responsive and then click export to apply these settings. Then just hit copy embed to grab the HTML snippet you can use to embed your interactive scene. Just paste the script tags into the body of your site or inside an HTML embed. And that's it, just copy and paste and no need for any coding at all. This will also work on touch screens like mobile phones and tablets. It's a super quick and easy way to create a simple interaction for your projects. And before we wrap up, remember you can always explore and try out different variations of your design. You can duplicate your frame, play around with colors, strokes, and effects, and for example, create versions that are more colorful or more vibrant depending on the mood you're going for. There are many other ways to create 2D interactions with HANA that we can explore together. Take a look at the demos we've linked in the video description. And if you want to create the same effect but with 3D shapes, check out this other tutorial using Spline's 3D Editor. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.